Hey guys, it's Matt, and I just want to do this last video uh, in this kind of mini series of equations and calculations. And today we're going to do the uh, ideal alveolar uh, gas equation. Uh, and this is used when you're thinking and talking about diffusion of gases uh, at that uh, AC membrane, the alveolar capillary membrane. It's just uh, one of the one of the pieces. Uh, to determining uh, that. So, the ideal alveolar gas exchange is, or as the equation states, P big A O2, because we're talking about alveolar, uh, little a is usually arterial. So PaO2 equals the barometric pressure minus the pressure of water vapor multiplied by the FiO2 minus the pressure of arterial CO2 and that is divided by 0 0.8 0 0.8 is uh, what's called the respiratory exchange ratio uh, and it's assumed to be this and that's just based on a mixed diet guys like we eat carbs we eat, uh, lipids or fats we eat proteins uh, this number can go up or down as the diet if you eat more carbs or if you eat more fats or something this can actually change uh, but for this equation it's assumed to be 0.8 now uh, sometimes you will see this equation written um, instead of 0.08 People will instead choose to multiply by 1.25, which is the reciprocal of dividing by 0.8. This is a little easier to do. Uh, I mean, anytime you can multiply it as opposed to divide, it makes it a little easier to do. So this is how I'm going to be doing it. I will not be dividing by 0.8. All right, guys. So um, here is my example. Uh, if a patient is receiving an FiO2 of 40% on a day when the barometric pressure is 755 milligrams of mercury, and if uh, the PaCO2 is 55, so let's say there was an, an ABG or something drawn, uh, then what is the patient's alveolar oxygen tension? So then uh, using our formula here, we just start plugging in stuff, right? PaO2 is equal to, so PB is going to be 755 minus. Now, we didn't reference the pressure of water vapor, which is the, uh, it's like the, the vapor that the air picks up as it travels through your upper and uh, airways, down your trachea, through the uh, bronchioles, down basically to the alveolus. So uh, the pressure of water vapor in this equation is always 47. So that's just the number they've determined. It's a constant. So you can assume that every time you see this. Unless you're told for some reason otherwise. Which would be weird. Uh, so now we want the FiO2. Well, it's 40%. So guys, you write that as a decimal, of course. Uh, let's see. Minus. We are PaCO2. We were given as 55. And we're going to multiply that by 1.25. Now again, guys, this is straightforward mathematics right here, right? What's our order of operation? Uh, let's see. Uh, I... Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Right, guys? We all remember that from grade school. Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Uh, that can be applied here. Uh, so as we work down, so parentheses... Let's see, we'll have 708. We can leave that point. 40 minus 55 times 1.25. Keep working down. We got 708.40. <clears throat> so that is 68.75. We do this multiplication, guys. We're going to get. 
283.2 minus the 68.75. Finally, guys, you do this, uh, this subtraction here. You're going to get 21445. Now, make sure you're comfortable doing multiplication, division, subtraction, guys. Uh, you're generally not a lot of calculator. Uh, but in this case, guys, our PA02 is 214.45. Now, I mentioned this, I think, in that first video I did on my little outro that uh, there are times when a simplified equation can be used. Basically, you can drop the coefficient regardless of how you're doing it, the 0.08 or the 1.25. Uh, and that is when the PaCO2 is less than 60 millimeters of mercury and the FiO2 is greater than 60%. If these parameters are met, you do not need to, to use this respiratory... Uh, uh, quotient uh, and I asked about that why is that I mean if you did accidentally would you would you have a skewed number no it's just at that point uh, your numbers are so close it doesn't really matter I think it's just something nice to remember because it does matter obviously <laughs> um, it sounds like you could probably figure out the answer fairly closely if you still used it in this case um, but generally speaking uh, if these parameters are met, you don't want to uh, use this respiratory uh, quotient. So, all right, guys, uh, that was kind of the last big doozy as far as the equations that I've come across that are just really tough to understand. So, um, as always, guys, uh, thanks for the feedback on the other two videos and the comments. I'm glad it looks like they're helping some people. Hopefully, not confusing anyone. Again, guys, if you're not taught the way that I'm taught. Do it the way you're taught, because that's the way you, your instructor is going to expect to see you answering the questions. Um, this is just something else to help you figure it out in case you were, were unclear on something. It's always nice to see things from different perspectives. So, Anyways, guys, take care. Have a great day, and I will talk to you guys soon.